it's become the new Great Australian getaway machine, the Lifestyle Ute, a 4x4 double cab pickup that works hard during the week and probably even harder on the weekends. This car, Ford's 2016 Ranger Wild Track, the range topping, all singing, all dancing version of their locally developed pickup. Let's take a closer look. Now, while it may seem that there's an infinite number of Ranger variants available on the market, the Wild Track kind of sits alone. It's got its own unique look, its own unique color, and at $60,000 isn't really the blue collar work you'd of old. It's aimed fairly and squarely at the lifestyle segment. Now, what do we mean by that? I'll show you. Take the uh, garage door style tonneau cover. Great for security, but if you're trying to uh, put a big load in the back there, you can see that the unit itself takes up quite a bit of space underneath the rear spoiler assembly, which by the way, has got an integrated light that can be turned on from within the cabin. Kind of cool. The tray itself, which is roughly a 1.5 meter square, has a number of tie down points, but two of them are buried right up underneath the roll top up near the front of the cabin, making them really hard to get to. There are no exterior tie down points, making this not the world's most practical working ute. But if you've got, well, a whole bunch of camera gear in the back or perhaps something for uh, camping or a weekend away, then it does work quite well. It is down slightly uh, on an XLT, for example, as far as load capacity with an overall of 907 kilos, but it's still a very, very functional ute. You've got a standard tow ball there with a three and a half ton tow capacity and lots of other cool features. Let's go check out the back seat. Let's call it out right now, you're never going to be as comfortable as in the back of an SUV wagon. I'm sitting here, I have got a stack of headroom, but that driver's seat's in my position and I'm feeling a little bit close and my feet, particularly my big boots, are feeling a little bit tight on the floor. That said, it's not uncomfortable. The bench itself is a little bit firm. It's scalloped on the outside seats, but it probably won't work well if you're sitting three up, particularly with adults. For children though, you've got two isofix points on this side and this side, obviously the center armrest with cup holders, map pockets, a 12 volt charge point, and a really handy main style outlet, which while it apparently won't run our coffee machine, thanks Paul, will do uh, charges for laptops and cameras, which we use all the time. There's also another one in the tray of the ute. Now, before we get behind the wheel and go for a drive, there's a couple of things I need to show you up the front. Now, as I said before, this color, Pride Orange, is exclusive to the Wild Track and is actually a $500 option. There are five color choices, by the way. Uh, the pug dog face gray surround on the grill is unique to the Wild Track and obviously helps set apart uh, this from any other Ranger in traffic. Now, I'm not actually a total fan of this. I prefer the chrome grill on the XLT, but each to their own. Now, under the bonnet, is the 3.2 litre five cylinder turbo diesel with 147 kilowatts and 470 Newton meters. There's a big heavy duty battery that helps run all the car's accessory systems, but the big call out here is the height of the air intake. The Ranger has an 800 millimeter water wading depth, which is pretty impressive for a car like this. We would demonstrate it for you, but well, there's no water actually in the creek over there because this is Australia. Anyway, let's go for a drive. Now, it probably wouldn't have been that long ago when the suggestion of a ute being the family transport and the car that you basically wanted to have as your lifestyle vehicle would have been a very foreign concept for a lot of Australian families. It was wagons and nothing else. The rise of the lifestyle ute, particularly with cars like the Wild Track, has uh, seen a whole new growth in this segment because people are using these cars for a little bit of work during the week, particularly if you're uh, in the, I guess we'd call them, the white blue collars. Builders, architects, that kind of frontline industry where you do need a bit of a load bay out the back and you do want some all wheel drive capability, but you're not there on the tools, banging in nails all day every day. So it used to be that a uh, body on frame ute was a pretty agricultural piece of equipment. You'd get a lot of noise, a lot of vibration, not a lot of sound deadening. You were basically in a chassis with a cab and a tray out the back. 
The Ranger Wildtrak is much more SUV-like, if that uh, makes sense at all. And you know what? It's actually really quite pleasant to drive. The car has a, uh, an electronic steering system that around town lightens it up and makes it very easy to manoeuvre through parking spaces and, and tight city streets. But out here on the highway, we're doing 100 kilometres an hour. It loads it up, so you do get a bit of weight there that feels well, quite right in your hands. It's, it's very comfortable. Uh, but it's something that you could easily see a long journey being a very, very capable and comfortable way to tour around. Now cabin noise, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's certainly noisier in here than it would be in a comparable SUV. A ute tends to be, well, maybe a little bit more economical on the sound deadening, but that said, it's actually pretty reasonable. We've measured the sound at around uh, 70 decibels at 80 kilometers an hour, which is sort of in line with, well, a noisy SUV, if you will. It's predominantly wind noise. You can hear it off the mirrors and you can hear it coming through uh, various parts of the cabin, but generally it's not that bad. It's the sort of thing that you could, well, certainly turn up the stereo and knock most of it out. Now a car like the Wild Track, you're buying it because it suits your lifestyle and that probably means getting out of town on a regular occasion. Comfort is then a uh, very, very prime requirement for you. And I have to say, this is a really comfy car to drive. It rides an awful lot more uh, like an SUV wagon than a ute. You don't get the standard sort of longitudinal float that you, uh, you tend to get with a leaf sprung rear, particularly without anything in the back as we are today. Uh, it, the car rides relatively softly. There's a little bit of jitter. It's certainly firmer than you would get from a, uh, a specific urban focused SUV. But in terms of a ute, it's actually really, really nice. And that's considering we're on 18 inch wheels in the wild track as well. Seating wise, now I'm a big guy, I've got plenty of room here. I'm sort of sitting uh, cowboy stance, if you will, my, my knees resting up against the, the center console and the door trim, and I'm really, really quite comfy. You've got a nice big arm sill because, well, this is Australia, you're gonna rest your elbow up there, and there is a massive call out to the amount of storage around the cabin. You've got a really big glove box, which apparently can fit a laptop, we'll test that in a minute big door pockets here which have got bottle holders in them you got twin cup holders a little cubby down in front of the uh, uh, the console which we've managed to fill up already but there's also a twin stage uh, cubby in the center armrest there are two USB points two 12 volt outlets an SD outlet a line in jack behind us there's another 12 volt outlet plus a 240 volt outlet it's a very very practical car and one of the biggest areas the Wild Track differs from uh, other ranges is, of course, the interior. You get the contrast stitching, which can be had in any colour you like, as long as it's orange, as they say in the classics. Uh, the seats, too, are a mixture of cloth and uh, leatherette material that are sort of put together in a, a sports-like fabric, which is black with orange inserts. May not be to everybody's tastes, but I tell you what, it sort of reaffirms the fact that you've gone for the slightly more out there option in the Ranger lineup. So being a double cab versus a, uh, a wagon like, say, the Ford Everest, you've got, well, basically the enclosed cabin that we're in now, and that's about it. And vision out of here is actually really good. You've got A-pillars quite close to your head, which have got grab handles on them for when you're going off-road or to, to help getting in and out, but they don't obstruct vision uh, at all, really. The mirrors are nice and big, and you've got quite a lot of vision around you with the rear windows and, of course, the, uh, the, the centre rear window providing really good visibility. Materials as well are really nice. The steering wheel with its leather and uh, contrast stitch is nice to hold. And I have to say, it feels a lot more premium in here than you would expect. Something to call out is the dark headliner. It's a weird thing, but I find in cars which have got a dark headliner as opposed to a light one, it immediately lifts the environment a little bit and makes it feel a little bit more special. And that's what the Wild Track is. You're wanting a ute, you're wanting the practicality, but you want something a little bit different. Now when the Update Ranger launched last year, Ford made a big fuss about this being the safest car in the segment. And well, you know what, they're not wrong. With the optional uh, technology pack that comes on the Wild Track, and actually, let's just call this one out, it's 600 bucks on a $60,000 ute to get the tech pack. That's 1% of the purchase price. Just bundle it in, Ford, just make it part of the package. If you're buying a Ranger, a uh, Wild Track, insist on getting that tech pack as part of the deal, please. Now, as part of the technology pack fitted to this vehicle, you get a lot of really cool modern 
driver assistance features that were certainly only available in some high-end European cars up until a few years ago. And remember, this is still a ute. We've got radar-guided cruise control on and, and active at the moment. We've got a lane-keeping uh, and lane departure assistance system working as well that will notice if we swerve out of our lane, it will bring us back in with a minor adjustment to the steering wheel automatically. Now, it's not full autonomy, but it's getting there, certainly for a ute. We've got a pre-collision warning system with a, a row of lights up here on the dashboard that will light up in order uh, of severity of how close you are for the vehicle in front. If you're just sort of tailgating someone a little bit too close, you get six lights. If they're stopping in a hurry and you need to be thinking about it, you'll get the full row. Now it's not an automated emergency braking system. Apparently it primes the brakes to basically help you stop very quickly in an accident, but you need to be paying attention. This is just a pre-collision warning system, but still something pretty impressive. As far as other driver assistance features fitted to a four x four pickup like the Wild Track, it's a long, long list. There's a trailer sway system, there's a rollover mitigation system, there's obviously hill descent control for four wheel driving, and a bunch of other systems that are designed to make your life driving the Ranger Wild Track an awful lot easier and a lot safer. And I tell you what, they're pretty easy to use as well. You've got these twin uh, 4.2 inch LCD screens either side of the main speedometer, and you can see a little graphic here at the moment that shows what speed we're doing, where we're sitting in our lane, and how far the car is in front of us. It was only not that long ago that you had to be in a Mercedes to see that. This is a Ford. Another big change for the second generation Ranger was of course Ford's Sync 2 8 inch touchscreen. Now, let's call it out. It is a well featured system. You've got navigation, you've got digital radio, you've got voice recognition, you've got all sorts of gee whiz and whiz bang that goes along with it. And fundamentally it does work but it's not the best on the market. There's a lot of clumsiness to it. The interface itself is quite tricky to use. As a touchscreen, particularly while you're on the move and bumping around a little bit in a ute, you've got quite small buttons that you've got to line your finger up to get. So it's not the easiest system to use. And then of course, the much touted voice control, which Ford have said, oh, it's terrific. You can simply say to your car, I'm hungry and it'll find you a restaurant. I don't know about you, but I've never actually just said, I'm hungry to the car. I want very simple and clear commands to be able to be put in, to call someone, to set the climate, to put in a destination. But for simple tasks like that, you need to know the system's language and the way that it works. And even then, it's not perfect. Check this out. Climate, 18 degrees. Try Selenia device name like phone or USB. You can also say navigation or climate, main oh. menu, say a command. Cancel. Now, if you don't tell dear old Hal there to shut up, she'll just keep going and trying to do whatever you want. And you would have noticed we said climate and she said, you should just say climate. So I don't quite know if it's not been picked up to get uh, a very Australian twang, although she responds with some pretty strong Aussieisms herself. Uh, or if in fact it's the cabin noise that doesn't really work with the car at 110 kilometers an hour here. It's just not perfect. It's not the best implementation. And to be honest, it's still easier to go through manually to set up what you want to do. You can do the fun one of I'm hungry if you like, but out here in the middle of Victoria, well, quite frankly, I don't want to trust the car's recommendation. One thing I'm not a huge fan of in the layout of the uh, Ranger's cabin is the air conditioning controls on the lower part of the centre stack here. It kind of angles in and unless you really know exactly where everything is, it becomes a little bit hard to find and you need to look at it for a lot longer than you probably should rather than looking ahead. Something like, say, the heated seat controls, which is included on the Wild Track, by the way, uh, it's not the clearest button to kind of look at. And well, if you're doing 100 k's an hour and, and are, are not really paying that much attention and worried about how warm your bum is, probably something that uh, should be a lot easier to set. And again, Ford suggests you should probably do it with the voice control system, but God knows how long that'll take. Now pulling the wild track, as in most other ranges, is the uh, 3.2 litre, five cylinder turbo diesel engine with 147 kilowatts and 470 newton metres of torque. It's paired in this car to a six-speed automatic transmission. And I tell you what, it's good. 
It's really good, to be honest. Cruises quite happily. It rides quite easily around town. You don't get a lot of the, the kind of lagginess that you do in some of the other double cab utes. And for the gearbox matched to this system, it's a very, very smooth changing unit. Now you can pop it into a sports mode if that's your thing. But really, leaving it in drive, letting the car do its thing, it's a very, very smooth thing to drive. And to be honest, probably the most impressive part of the Ranger's uh, underpinnings. One of the things that Ford did when they updated for the, uh, the Series 2 Ranger that we're in now was improving the fuel economy. Previously, uh, I think they claimed it was just under 10 litres per 100, and now they say on a combined cycle you should see around 9. Now we've done a lot of freeway driving today, and currently, well, we're sitting on exactly 9 litres per 100, which for a car like this is actually okay. It's not as good as, say, the Isuzu uh, D-Max, which we've been very impressed with the fuel economy out of the three litre uh, diesel in, in that car, but it's not bad. And it's not the sort of thing that you used to be driving a big car like this. You'd be looking deep into the teens, even low twenties for fuel consumption. Nine litres per hundred, honestly, that's great. You don't even need to worry about it. Now, while generally it may be coming across that the opinion of the Ranger and, and the Wild Track specifically is really good. And to be honest, it is. This is a car you'll be very happy with. Things to call out though, some of the plastics, they, well, they're a little bit cheap and flimsy in, in spots. Remembering this is a $60,000 car before on roads uh, and before any accessories that you want to add, you sort of want things to be a little bit nicer. But that said, it is a ute at its core and you want things that are gonna be easy to clean. But let's face it, your entire life living with the, the wild track is not gonna be spent on the highway. Let's go and see how it deals with some, well, slightly more bumpier roads. Now we've come off the main highway now onto a, a, a bit of a, a rough B road and the range is still doing a really good job of translating the road back to me, the driver. It's still not jittering around, it's still a relatively comfortable ride. You can feel certainly the firmness uh, of the ute even over those little bumps there, but it's light enough and direct enough uh, to provide not only an enjoyable driving experience, but a very confident one as well. One little annoying thing that I will say, the mirror controls are practically invisible. They're hidden behind the, uh, the indicator stalk here on the right of the steering wheel. I can just see the button that folds them in when you park, and I can't see the D-pad at all to manoeuvre the mirrors. Now, occasionally, you do need to change where your mirrors are on the move. That's a pretty annoying system. Plus, there's a button down near my right knee. I've got no idea what it does. I've been pressing it on and off, on and off. Nothing lights up on the dash. Nothing changes in the car. Uh, but because it's down there, I can't actually see what it is. I know what it is, it's the light in the rear tray, by the way, just before you jump on the comments. But it is very hard to see, and something obviously that you'd need to familiarize yourself with uh, before driving the wild track for any great distance. Now on a gravel road like, um, like this, wild track's very settled. You can feel it bumping around, you can feel it dealing with the corrugations, uh, but we're feeling very settled. We're certainly not getting a lot of vibration and uh, uh, undue comfort back into the cabin uh, and again cars barely skipped a beat coming through here typical driving on gravel roads though you do need to take care we're still in two-wheel drive we can switch to four-wheel drive on the fly if we uh, if we want to but at this point we don't need to all right now we've taken the uh, the Ranger off the main track onto a, a slightly less well-trodden path with a very steep decline uh, and we can actually use the cars uh, hill descent control to help govern coming down here. Very simple thing, just press a button, tells you it's ready, you say okay, and off we go. And it basically governs the car down the hill. You can hear it kind of clicking away, uh, working the traction control systems as it manages it coming down the hill. Um, you can probably hear it more if I shut up, to be honest. Uh, but this obviously as a system is there to, to help you do it. It feels like we're crawling down here uh, with, with uh, a huge margin for safety, but obviously the car is managing and balancing its way down this relatively steep uh, little decline, uh, knowing that all the time it's in full control. Now while uh, this car is certainly quite capable in some pretty extreme off-road environments, as we've seen and tested uh, a number of times, let's face it, most of us don't really kind of go anywhere that's uh, going to put the vehicle to its ultimate test. Where we are now, on a very thin, quite steep, not particularly rutted, but uh, well-maintained path is probably, 
Well, it's probably pretty standard off-roadiness for most Australian families, and the Ranger is just eating this stuff up. We've got a locking rear diff, should we need it? Uh, but to be honest, down here, and we're in four-wheel drive high at the moment, by the way, um, coming down here is fine. Now we've got another steep decline, just for safety, I'm gonna pop on the, the hill descent control system again. Um, and it can manage us down here. And it shows that if you're uh, even a, a novice or first time or, or, or not regular off-road user, the car's got enough technology that it can help support you and you can make sure that you can get in and out of a, a nice drive in the bush without any stress to you, the family, or the car. Sometimes it does get a little bit steep, like here. And you need to not only manage, and what we're gonna do is stop, we're gonna put our locking rear diff and we're gonna put it on four wheel drive low. The thing is, is coming up here in a car like the Ranger, it's substantially more capable than you give it credit for. <laughs> Never not fun. Now we've put it in four low and we've locked the rear diff just to make sure we got up because that's embarrassing on video when you don't. Uh, but I'll turn it around and we'll go back down. Well look, for $60,000, yes, the Ranger Wildtrak is a pretty expensive ute. But whichever way you look at it, it's a hell of a lot of car for the money, both in sheer size and sheet metal, features, functionality, capability, both out here in the bush and back in town. Now, if you're a buyer who's looking to move from, say, an SUV wagon, make sure you go in with your eyes open because you're probably not gonna get the same level of comfort, refinement, and perhaps even usable space than what you're used to. But if you think a double cab ute like old Pugface there is exactly what you need to fit your work and play lifestyle, then take a look at the 2016 Ford Ranger Wildtrak and I reckon you'll be impressed.